Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, I'm Simon. After many people have requested more stories on the channel and for those of you not familiar, back a year or so ago I started doing stories around, based in Thailand, about people. Have a look back at the playlists and you'll see some good ones there, Mike and Kung and Jib the Vampire Vargo. It's time for a new story. So many of you requested it. And this story, again, is a true story. It's from a gentleman I met back in 2001 when I was working in Patea. But I need to start off and give you a backstory. This guy is called Tim. And a little bit uh, overweight. Lost his hair, same as me, when he was very young, about 20 years old. And eyesight, not brilliant, and he had quite thick glasses, but he was from, lived in Detroit, in the States. Only had a father, and his father worked in the car industry, either for Ford or GM, I'm not sure which, when he told me. and. When the car industry changed, his dad started his own panel beating painting business. Now Tim, at school, he just fell out of school with everyone. He was picked on a bit and bullied. He was good at art, but nothing else. And as soon as he left school, he joined his father's business and he learned the trade as painting and panel beating, but he didn't really enjoy it. His father sadly passed away um, and it would have been about 1980. Tim was 18 years old. He didn't have a business head and the father's little business, it just closed down. Tim got a couple of jobs doing a bit of spraying here and there and suddenly found from his art days, his, his love of art, that he could do artistic murals, custom paint jobs on panels, on metal panels. His love for motorcycle, he had an old motorcycle. He painted his own bike, his petrol tank, and he did a, a beautiful gothic skulls and crossbow all the different things on there. And he soon got spotted by other motorcycle enthusiasts, a lot of bike gangs and clubs in those days around the States. And he started doing work for other people on their bikes. Really good money, strong money, pretty quick. He was earning good money. And he was getting better and better the more he did. He didn't bother setting up a, a, a business or a shop. He lived in a mobile home, I believe he called them trailers uh, in America. And he painted people's bikes from a shed in, outside the trailer, the mobile home and worked hard, learned the trade and was starting to get known around the local area. 1986, Tim was out on his bike and he got knocked off his bike by a motorist, luckily insured, but Tim suffered uh, severe um, problems with his arm and he lost his fingers on his right hand, all his fingers and his thumb, and he was right-handed with his painting. The accident, it took him months to get over, um, visits to the hospital, and after he came out of hospital, insurance started to look at paying him compensation. The loss of his fingers. He tried doing some painting with his left hand, couldn't do it. Uh, tried drawing with his left hand. His business, overnight, he'd lost his, his newfound love and career. Over the next three years, and it took that long to sort the insurance out, he just didn't work. And he became sort of secluded. He never really had girlfriends in the States because he was slightly overweight. Also the glasses, they were the thick glasses. 
and no hair. He just didn't have that look that the girls were going for back then. Three years passed, insurance paid out. He received about $120,000 for his injuries. Now that was a shock, he didn't expect to get anything like that. Here he is, Detroit, mobile home trailer, no job, broken motorbike. He could still ride a bike with his hand, um, just couldn't use the front brake, so, but he was still riding. Coming into all that money was a big shock. He had a few friends. Uh, just at that moment he got the money, his friends, they were traveling backwards and forwards to Thailand. One was an ex-army guy, um, ex-vet. Another one was a, a successful business guy who had two or three restaurants that Tim frequented and went to school with him. So, and there was another lad who just worked in the, a gas station. But these three friends were about to go off to Thailand. The lad with the restaurant, successful, two or three restaurant chain, lost a family member and had to pull out of the trip. The other two lads said to Tim, look, spare tickets, everything, come with us. He'd just come into all his money. He was 27 at this point, years old, no girlfriend, money. Okay, why not? Go to Thailand. He didn't know anything about Thailand. And he jumped on a plane with the other two. Off they went. And as so many people do when they first go to Thailand, especially single guys or guys just looking for a bit of fun, in any country, they will head for the bright lights. Where is all the bars? You know, where's the activity in the country? They landed in Thailand and their choice was Pattaya. Patea, headed down there. So this was like 19, 1990, it's got to be 1990, yeah, he was like 27, 28 years old. First time to Thailand, the other two have been before. But on arriving, after the guy showed him the sort of around and what was happening, they sort of disappeared off and left him on his own, which was not really the done thing being friends. He found himself in Patea, money in pocket, no girlfriends, suddenly lots of attention from ladies and alcohol available everywhere. Over the two week holiday, he got drunk a lot. He had lots of casual relationships with girls. <clears throat> First time in his life, really. He loved it. it, it was great, it really was good. It was so different from what he was used to. And like a lot of people that go to Thailand for the first time, and they go to somewhere like Patea, it, it, it's got a bit of a, like a secret magnet that wants to draw you back in. It's just so different from so many places in the world. And you can escape your normal daily life by landing in this tinsel town, this just amazing pocket of the world. Two weeks holiday, it was up and came back with his friends, back to Detroit. He hadn't spent a lot of money, he'd been really good. Got back, was back to his trailer, his friends went off to do their jobs. And he didn't have that immediate draw to Thailand. His life had changed so much, lost his dad, lost the business, lost his hand, his fingers in the accident. He had no purpose with his life at that moment. And a lot of people go through, so whatever happens in your life, things change, you suddenly find yourself, what do I do? And he, he was at that position, he was at the crossroads in his life. He decided his money was safe in the bank, his trailer was paid for, he just wanted to lock it up and go on a bit of adventure. He got his motorcycle, he did it up, fixed it up, and he threw a backpack on and he wandered off on the bike around California 
and that side of America, all down the, the west coast, up and down. And on his travels in America, there's quite a few of these, I believe, coyote bars, go-go bars, hostess bars. There's some sort of bars where there's girls dancing and there's girls from all over the world. He's found himself outside of LA at one of these bars. He's got a motel room, he's gone to a bar and he's got talking to a Thai girl in this bar. And he's bought her a drink, she was a dancer and she sat down chatting to him. And I'm gonna leave it there. That's the start of the new series. That's the main character. And we'll see how we get on and what happens to Tim in the future. I hope you're hooked. <laughs> we'll see where this story goes. None of you will guess, because it's just, you know me. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now. <laughs>